Okay, hi guys. I just wanted to do a um, quick follow-up video on the depth of field and uh, crop factor, crop um, uh, sensor video that I did. Had a really good feedback on that. Had like about 20,000 views over the weekend or something and tons of feedback. A uh, vast majority of it being very positive and, um, you know, just agreeing with me basically. But then a few very loud minorities uh, that Theo... Ken, angry photographer guy, whatever his name is, actually done specific video attacks on my video. Um, the guy's a raving lunatic. But <laughs> anyway, I wanted to um, go over a couple of the very small mistakes that I made and flag those up. Uh, and then also um, uh, sort of go into a little bit more detail for those that still don't get some of this stuff. So the first, the, the only, as far as I'm concerned, the only real major mistake I made uh, in my Ill illustrations was when I was talking about the um, the point of light that was out of focus uh, behind our focus plane. Uh, I did my ray tracing wrong on my illustrations, totally my bad. I just made a mistake, so here's the mistake corrected. But the the converging point for the um, uh, the light being focused down should have gone in front of the sensor and not behind the sensor. If the out of focus area, the you know the relating point in the real world was behind our focus plane. So that was my first and only real major mistake um, in the actual illustration. It doesn't change the point that I was getting across, the fact that the, the cone of light is intersecting one side of the sensor and it's therefore like a, a large circle rather than a, a tiny point um, to give you definite focus for that point there. Um, the other sort of mistake I made in my labelling, I wrote depth of, depth of field around the area of focus around the sensor and that isn't correct, it's called depth of focus. So it's depth of focus around the sensor and inside the camera, and it's depth of field out in the real world, you know, where your model is or your actor or whatever. So it was just a typo, I wrote depth of field there when it should have said depth of, depth of focus. Another minor thing that I got slightly wrong is when I drew my depth of field area, it should have had more space behind it than in front because that obviously works with um, the same as when you bring an object closer to the lens, you have a narrow depth of field. Uh, when, you, when you move it away, you get a wider depth of field. Um, so on both of these, I should have had a larger area behind that would have been acceptably in focus and a smaller area in front rather than the same amount of space on each side. Um, so these are pretty much all the same. I redrew these, some of these slightly, so they they're a little bit more accurate. But the same message was um, the the message was identical. So I didn't get anything wrong in my core message. Um, now one of the things that many people said is that uh, you know modern lenses have multiple elements, uh, and they're way more complicated than my very very simple you know double convex lens model, and that's completely correct. Uh, but when the when the lens manufacturers uh, you know make these lenses, they regardless of how many elements and how how they're built, they're they're designed with very specific parameters um, in place, so that your aperture doesn't matter where your aperture actually physically is within the lens, uh, if it says it's an f two, it's an f two, and it works out uh, exactly the same as it would be on a simple model, uh, same as your focal length, even though you know the actual the distance from your, uh, your, where you're capturing your image to the end of the lens that, you know, the actual midpoint of the lens may, may be somewhere within all of these elements, but they work it out so that one 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera and another 50 millimeter lens on a, you know, from a different manufacturer on the same camera is going to have the same field of view. So they're going to work, they're both going to work like 50 millimeters. It doesn't matter if the actual lens design is a bit different. Um, so, you know, and you know there is going to be some difference in transmission. Your f-stop doesn't automatically completely describe the transmission because there's going to be different um, lenses, even though they're both you know say at f2. Uh, one will be letting in a tiny bit more light than the other. There there is variance in the quality of the glass and the amount of glass that the manufacturers used. Uh, that's quite true. The transmission amount is a bit different, but it's not going to be a million miles away from your your f-stop if you compare cinema lenses and the, the transmission amount and the f-stop, you know, they normally relate quite closely and obviously the f-stop has a bit less light generally than the, the actual transmission because no lens is optically, optically perfect. So you can still use the f-stop as a good um, judge of exposure between different lenses and different types of lenses and all the rest of it. That's kind of what it's there for. 
Um, but you know, it's worth mentioning that no lens is optically perfect and f-stops don't let in, you know, 100% of all the light that uh, is going into the front of the lens. Not all of it makes it out through the back of the lens. Anyway, moving on. I also wanted to uh, cover something that that angry photographer guy uh, said, which <laughs> which absolutely just made me realise that he's a raving lunatic and he doesn't understand the basics about uh, lenses. Uh, but I thought I'd, I'd sort of reply to what he said to me, and also um, it might also help explain more of more of what we've been talking about in it, f coming at it from a slightly different um, point of view. Um, so let's have a look at this here. So what he said to me is that the field of view, you know, the, the actual angle of view for the lens doesn't have any sway on the, the amount of light it's gathering and exposure, which is just fundamental, it's one of the fundamental principles of these lenses, it's why f-stop is designed the way it is to accommodate for the fact that a wider lens is gathering light from a larger area than a, than a longer lens, a longer focal length lens with a, with a narrow field of view, it's obviously looking at less of the scene, so the less of the light from that scene is getting in. When you're looking at a great big wide scene, you've got light bouncing off objects from all over the place, from all the way to the left and all the way to the right. So, I mean, this is why f-stop works the way it does. To explain that, a 50 millimeter lens, now I've done all these measurements correctly, obviously it's an incredibly simple uh, lens view, but I've done all these measurements correct. So this is a 50 millimeter lens here, uh, and with that 50 millimeter lens at f2, the diameter of the aperture would be 25 millimeters across, okay? That's giving you a square area for that hole in the aperture, uh, 490.8 millimeters squared, okay? So that's the um, physical size of the aperture at f2. Now on a 25 millimeter lens at f2, both the same f-stop, we have a 12.5 millimeter diameter okay, on the aperture. So the square area is 122.7 millimeters. So that's one quarter of the area. So one, so even though they're both at f2, and they're both on full frame, you know, they're both, this is just a 50 millimeter, millimeter lens, it's a 25 millimeter lens, nothing sort of special about them. Uh, they're both at f2, and yet this one has a hole that's one quarter of the, of the size of this one. Half the width, it's half the size across, but quarter of the area. Uh, and why would you think they do that? Why would you think f-stop works like that? Because when we look at the actual field of view, so let's get into this a little bit more. So a 50 millimeter lens has a field of view of 39.6 degrees from left to right. Uh, this, that's what this angle is here. We're looking at these two lenses from the top as if we're looking at top down into the camera and 27 degrees um, from top to bottom, bottom vertically, basically. Um, which gives us, if we're looking at an object which is 100 meters away, let's say for the sake of argument, we're looking at a wall, a massive, gigantic wall that's 100 uh, meters away from us. We can see of that wall a square area with the 50 millimeter lens on a full frame, uh, a 3,456 square meters, because we've just taken these two numbers of the, the meters up and the meters across, and we've just squared it, basically, to make the, the area. Now, on a 25 millimeter, we're, we're, we're looking at uh, a 71.5 degrees horizontal angle, field of view, and 51.3. So that would give us, we're looking at 140, we can see 144 meters of that actual physical wall cross uh, when it's 100 meters away and we can see 96 meters from top to bottom. That gives us a scene area. We can see of that wall that's 100 meters away, uh, 13,824 square meters. So we're looking at four times the actual physical width from top to bottom, left to right of that wall with the wide lens than we are with the 50 millimeter lens. So this is why the aperture is worked out the way it is. And this is why this is a quarter of the size of this, and this is a quarter of the size of this, because we're taking with one hand exactly the same amount that we're giving with the other hand, so it all equates. So the exposure at f2 on this lens matches the exposure at f2 on this lens, even though the physical hole that you're looking through is smaller on the wide lens, and 
the amount of the scene that you're looking at is much greater on the wide, short focal length lens. So it all nicely works out. So that chap clearly doesn't understand the basics, of the very, very basics of lens design. If he's saying the field of view <laughs> doesn't matter for the amount of light you're gathering, he's off his fucking rocker. Anyway, so I just wanted to reply on that because it might also help you guys understand why we do the um, the the crop factor, the method that I suggested. That's why is it's the best way to do it. So if you now look at um, so these are both on full frame. If we now look at popping this twenty five millimeter onto a uh, a micro four thirds um, sensor, which is half the size or a quarter of the area, basically. As you know, if you put a 25 millimeter uh, lens on a micro four thirds, uh, it will give you the same field of view as a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame. So there's this scene area and the field of view is now exactly the same, but our lens is half the length. So, and remember when our lens is half the length, that means our, the diameter of the aperture, even when they're both got the same f-stop, is half, it's half the diameter which means it's a quarter of the area. So this is why exactly why we do the um, equation the way I suggested in the, the previous video. So when we put our when we do our correct crop factor adjustment, just like I expressed in the uh, the last video, and we put we do the crop factor and add it onto the aperture. So this one's at f2, and we've got a two times crop factor from the micro four thirds. So we do two times two is four. It's not rocket science. And then that gives us a 12.5 millimeter diameter aperture, which is exactly the same size diameter that we have on a 25 millimeter lens, because that's the way f-stop is worked out. Okay, it's worked out as a direct relationship to the focal length. So now we both have exactly the same square area of hole for this aperture and this aperture. They're, they're both the same size, this one and this one and they're both looking at the same amount of the world, the same same square area of physical world outside. Uh, and that is why everything works out correctly. You get the same compression, you get the same depth of field. Well, you get the same compression if you're standing at the same point, obviously. You get the same depth of field, you get the same total amount of light hitting this sensor, the smaller sensor, and this bigger sensor. So remember, it's all just, you know, we're just talking about the light which is hitting the sensor. We're not worried about the light which is being spilled around and being wasted. Um, we get the same total amount of light, we get the same depth of field, we get the same noise levels because we're giving the same, both sensors the same total amount of light, the same total amount of photons. Um, just because this one's compressed down to a smaller area, uh, it doesn't mean it's, it's getting more total light. It means it's getting the same amount of total light, okay? Because we've done all the crop factor adjustment correctly. <sighs> anyway, I wanted to, yeah, just talk that through and um, possibly that will help explain it for, to a few people that just didn't get it the first time around. And yeah, like I say, replied to uh, a couple of the attacks that I had regarding that video. Um, I don't want to turn this, this channel into a, a technical, you know, Arg constant argument about bloody lenses, lenses design. I know that my facts are right in this, and I know that the the couple of the small minority that have been arguing against it don't know what they're talking about. So I don't need to do <laughs> this again. I've got the vast majority of the, uh, of, you know, of, from my feedback, from what I can tell, the vast majority of people agree with me. So I don't need to keep getting defences about this. I want to get out there and have fun with my lenses and go and film some stuff and just enjoy using my cameras again. So I'm not going to continue to do these types of videos, but when you get direct attacks and, and people making videos that directly attack what you said, when you're right, you kind of feel like you have to uh, put a retort out there, put a reply out there. Um, anyway, so I hope this this new way of looking at it in terms of the, the scene area and the actual aperture size, the physical aperture size, you know, across different lenses and different sensors and stuff, that may possibly have also helped clarify um, for those of you that kind of agreed with me but didn't fully get what I was on about. Um, 
I hope it did. Uh, one other thing that I wish I mentioned, like I just did briefly mention that, I didn't mention compression before, the compression of the image. Um, when you do everything the way I suggested in the previous video, because you've got the same field of view and because you're standing at the same from the same distance from the subject, the compression will be the same. So a few people ask me about that. You don't need to worry if you follow um, if you follow the, the you know the theory that the the method that I suggested in the last video, your compression will be the same. The same as your depth of field will be the same. The same as your noise levels will be the same. You know within tolerances of technology differences and sensors and stuff. Everything that's important will be the same, so you know you can continue uh, with a bit of peace of mind there. Anyway, guys, I'm going to shut up now. Um, yeah, please again, if if I made mistakes, let me know. I'm keen. I, like, I, like I've just explained in this video, I'm keen to point out any mistakes that I make. Uh, luckily, they were, we weren't deal breakers in the in the previous video. Just a couple of minor ones on my labelling and illustration. Um, but the principle was all fine. But I am keen to hear uh, if anyone has got, uh, you know, they want to point out any particular mistake, but obviously I want you to back it up with a, a cohesive, um, you know, argument that makes sense to an English speaking person, not the, the sort of gibberish that that, um, that Theo, the fat, angry, whatever his name is, photographer guy. <laughs> Um, yeah, he just spouts gibberish. So, you know, maybe, maybe something that makes a bit more sense than what he says. Okay, guys, thanks. I'll leave that there.